Pastor Prince Korte is an accountant and pastor. Also, Nana Kofi Akwa is a blogger and a pastor. Edwin Apia is a journalist with the Fourth Estate. Evans Thompson is a law student at the University of Professional Studies here in Accra. You also have evangelist Dr. Teria. Baba Hilton is a student in the United Kingdom. And then we have the Member of Parliament for Northton who has been releasing some documents in the public domain. Let me start with him. Honorable uh, Ablakwa, this statement from the National Cathedral Secretariat, does it settle matters? Does it answer the questions that have been on your mind so far? Hi, good evening. And uh, good evening to the panel. Good evening to all distinguished listeners across the globe. Seven-page statement from the National Cathedral Secretariat, and uh, I must indicate that uh, the caucus, the NDC caucus in Parliament, is going to study it and put out a full response. Uh, so these are uh, preliminary uh, 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 concerns that I will be raising uh, on the back of this statement. So first of all, it is important to emphasize that what this statement does is a confirmation of our suspicion that this National Cathedral project is no longer what it was presented to the Ghanaian people as. Remember it had been presented as the President's personal play to God, a Thanksgiving offering if he wins the elections of 2016. And remember that on the 15th of November 2018, the finance minister came to parliament and indicated a little shift in that position where he said that the president is now proposing a partnership between the state and the church. Remember that earlier, when the president met the board of trustees, uh, he told them that this would be uh, a private project. So the churches uh, should take it up and Christians should contribute. And so you remember that Reverend Dr. Punifrin Pong, for example, went public and said that we are not using taxpayer funds. The Archbishop Duncan Williams, uh, a, a colossal uh, religious figure who I have enormous respect for, uh, also went public and said that, look, we are not using taxpayer funds. So he's surprised that people will even be uh, criticizing the project. So when the finance minister came to parliament and made this announcement, we considered it a major shift. It was a new paradigm. So if you read the Hansard of 28 November 2018, when we were debating the 2019 budget, we said that, look, this is new. It's uh, clearly uh, uh, a departure from what you told us, what the priests have been saying. So once you're talking about a partnership now, you need to provide specifics. You need to let us understand what this partnership entails, uh, what is going to be the running cost of the secretariat, how much is the tax we are going to spend doing that, what is going to be the cost of land, what is going to be the value of this seed money. You talk about seed money. What is the value of it? How much is involved here? We didn't get any responses. There was no allocation whatsoever in the 2019 budget, in the 2020 budget, in the 2021 budget, and in the 2022 budget. That is why we were shocked to the marrow when we intercepted documents that confirmed that on our blind side, without parliamentary approval, in flagrant violation of Article 178 of the Constitution, the government had been withdrawing funds from the Consolidated Fund to finance this project. Now, when you read this statement carefully, it's clear to me and to anybody who pays attention that we are no longer talking about seed money. Even this, you know, uh, shift from the original position of private funding, personal pledge, 
then it shifted to partnership uh, seed money. What this statement now does is to confirm that, look, let's prepare our minds. This is a government of Ghana project. And it really confirms all the documentation we have intercepted from the finance ministry, from the office of the president, that the kind of financing going on with taxpayer funds, it cannot be seed money. I mean, I don't think that uh, even uh, Afajato uh, will, 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 will look this way if you, if you look at the kind of funding going into this. This, this. this is no seed at all. So this statement is just confirming what we have always uh, suspected since we intercepted those documents. And it strengthens our resolve that the finance minister will have to face sanctions because he knew all along that this is a government of Ghana project. Uh, we, we are not even talking about seed contributions. The government is financing it. And yet he did not come for clear parliamentary approval under Article 178 of the Constitution. I must also add that when you read the statement, it is not clear how much has been withdrawn from the Consolidated Fund so far. They do not state that. They also do not tell us, the seed money, what really is the quantum in their expectation. What agreement do they have with government, the Board of Trustees? Uh, what, what, does, what does the seed money mean? Uh, and, and, and clearly, uh, you only see that this project is a national project and the taxpayer is going to be just financing virtually everything. If anything comes in as private donation, it looks like that is just supplementary. The other observation I make from the statement is that the 200 million Ghana cities releases so far, you don't see a clear accounting because remember that the contractors have suspended work, which the statement confirms. This statement really confirms everything we have been putting out. It confirms that the contractors have suspended work based on lack of payment. So the 200 million Ghana cities so far withdrawn from the consolidated fund unconstitutionally, where did that money go? I do not also see the statement address the issue of compensation. All of these people whose buildings were demolished, who are now up in arms against government waiting for their compensation. Because if the money didn't fully go into construction, one would have thought that at least some of that would go into compensating the victims of demolition. That too has not been done. Then the other observation I make relates to the Pastor Mensa on yeah. Otabel question. Mr. Blanco, just a second before Pastor Mensa on Otabel. On, on where the monies um, that had been released went, the statement is clear, is it not, that the $25 million and the dollars and the $25 million CDs were used for um, the specific uh, issues relating to the, the construction, the preparation of the ground. Uh, it, it mentions first that the, 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 the first tranche of the seed was used for mobilization of contractors to the site, site excavation, builders' works, equipment, materials, design of the integration of the Bible Museum, and biblical gardens to the project. So that's very specific, that's, isn't it? It's, 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 it, it, it cannot be adequate because they don't give us a breakdown. And then they are including items which have been catered for elsewhere. For example, when they include design here, we have put out documentation that shows that design was paid for separately. The yeah. 32 million cities that was paid to yeah, Sir David. I, I, I think, I think, the they, I think they also admit that, though, because if you read uh, the paragraph before, it says that payments to the consultants, Ajayi Associates, is therefore based on the contract signed in August uh, between Ajayi Associates and the presidency. These payments represent the fulfillment of the state's commitment in the appointment of the architect and design team and is separate from the seed money 
for the construction of the edifice. What they don't tell us is how much exactly went to this purpose. But they, they create a separation between the the twenty five million dollars, twenty five million CDs, and what also went to Ajay. Yes. So why are they being inconsistent in their statement? So in one breath is separate, and in another breath, when you are counting for the uh, initial twenty five million dollars, you are including design. <laughs> it, it 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 doesn't add up. So we will insist on a breakdown, and you see why parliamentary approval is important. When you have parliamentary approval, we will all know the scope of works. The relevant committees will be able to track, monitor, and we will know exactly what is going on. As it is now, these are people who are, you know, saying one thing. It's, there's no breakdown. There's no clarity. And they want us to just accept it. Look, this is how not to carry out any project. <laughs> I mean, a project in the name of the people. You go spend, you go withdraw money unconstitutionally, and it is only when there is controversy that you put out a statement. After the fact, mm. without breakdown, and you expect us to accept this. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Can you, if you, or you want to go and address the Mensa uh, uh I guess, points that he made also, that he did not yes. resign. Look, Evans, let's cut the chase. The statement lacked candor. It is bereft of sincerity. You cannot say that Reverend Mensa Otabel has never really been part of the board of trustees legally i mean i think we wanted to ask that add that that uh caveat legally not been part but he has so been part since the so election. so why keep his name his effigy on your website administrative lapse is the explanation admission administrative lapse only when we pointed it out exposed them because they were using that as part of, you know, you know, setting credibility drive and that, you know, this everybody is on board, you know, everybody is rallying and you're using it all over the world at various events and all of that. They, they cannot say that it's just some lapse that they didn't know about. And you see, look, the lack of candor, sincerity, and when you even point matters out, when they know they are, they are in the wrong, you will expect, as we are always taught in Christendom, that there will be some contriteness. They would apologize. And because, look, they've not even been fair to the respected, to the venerable pastor. They have not been fair to the general public. You know, so you admit that what was going on was clear misrepresentation. It was it was wrong to do that. You concede, uh, you apologize, and we move on. But to be contradicting yourself and coming up with all of these explanations that do not add up is is, is really disappointing. Okay, uh, <coughs> Mr. Brunker, thank you very much. So I I see that your questions in Parliament, you still stand by them. You expect the financial to come and give more. Uh, for the, for the uh, absolutely, and uh, this seven page statement. Uh, virtually confirms uh, all the suspicions we have had. It is clear that this is a government of Ghana project. They intend to use substantive um, uh, taxpayer funds to do this, and they have not followed the constitutional provisions. If you read the statement, they are trying to I mean, make reference to Kojo Kum. Kojo, the chief Tansi minister nominee was talking about a release made by his predecessor, the chief tenancy minister, at the time that they engaged in that unconstitutional withdrawal, was the Honorable Jamesi. So chief tenancy minister nominee, responding to a question adverting, only provided information. That does not amount to parliamentary approval. Mm. That is not how funds are approved yeah, Mr. Mr. in Mr. Parliament. Just, just quickly, uh, because of time, I want to bring the other connectors in. Very quickly, the statement also says that they've been providing what they call national cathedral updates to uh, MPs individually. Have you received any of those? I challenge them to produce those updates. 
And even if <laughs> they were producing those updates, that is not how Parliament did. That, that does not amount to an approval by Parliament where there is a resolution of the House, where it is, it is contained in the Appropriation Act. It doesn't. Even if you, if you are providing what updates, are they by flyers or leaflets or in magazines or brochures or they send us some link by text message, which I haven't seen before, all of that would not amount to parliamentary approval. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, please, they, 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 they are not uh, helping matters at all. Thank you very much. Samo Kujita Blackwa. I still we're here with, with Kweku. I want to quickly bring our connectors in uh, very quickly on this. Let's have the next uh, uh, more than 30 minutes to now bring all of you in, uh, wherever you are, and I'll be sharing your, your messages with you shortly. Uh, Nana Kofi Akwa, uh, blogger, is a pastor himself, uh, Pastor Prince Korte, uh, accountant and pastor Edwin Apia, journalist, Fort Estate, Evans Thompson, law student. Uh, uh, also connecting with us uh, from the UK, where they have a lot of national museums and cathedrals, as a Baba Hilton, all connecting right now. Uh, Nana Kofi Akwa, so where do you stand on this now? Uh, with everything now you've heard tonight and the whole of this week, what what, what should happen with the cathedral? What, what, what you, what's your take? Uh, I think that uh, because of uh, how much has already gone into it. Uh, they they may have to uh, re-strategize. Uh, I, I, I have never supported a cathedral. I thought it was a bad idea. I thought it shouldn't be a national burden. Uh, I thought that um, historically, if, if anybody who studies the Bible knows that uh, the, the, the one Solomon built, the temple he built, was actually 480 years after they came out of Egypt, after they became a nation. Ghana is 65 years old or something like that. You know, uh, we are a very young nation. We compare ourselves to, to the Englands and the, and the Netherlands. And we are actually a very, very young country uh, in those terms. Uh, also, those who study the Bible know that because building the temple and his palace was extremely expensive, Solomon resorted to using slave labor and overtaxing his people. This is what split his kingdom after him. So whilst his father ruled over Israel and Judah, and he himself did, when his son Rehoboam became king, the kingdom of Israel split from the kingdom of Judah, and they never recovered from it. Mm -hmm. you know, um, but most importantly, if we look at New Testament theology, the Bible is very, very clear. God does not live in temples built by human hands. And that's why for the Christian who thinks that the cathedral is a symbol of our faith in God, that is, that is a, an, an illusion. You know, God cares more what we do. So, the, for example, the lack of integrity expressed by the committee in charge of the cathedral, the dishonesty, uh, the moving money they shouldn't move, all of those things actually hurt the kingdom of God much more than the presence of some building that is built. You know, we need to understand that our bodies are the temple of God. What we do with our body is what matters. What we do in our private spaces what we do on the internet when nobody sees us, what we do when we are dealing in, in business transactions. These are the indicators of faith, not the physical buildings we build. Uh, for the first two, in fact, for the, our first 400 years of church history, so when you read the book of Acts and you see the early church formed, uh, at some point the book of Acts ends, but throughout the book of Acts, they never built a single church. Right. There's no church building. And the first church building uh, they started building them after over 400 years of church history. Is right. it, does that mean that they didn't have faith? Does that mean that God was not with them? No. A, a, very, a, very, a very important point that you just made there, and it, it brings me to this point that I can bring in Edwin Apia. He's with the fourth estate. He's also a Christian as well. Um, Edwin, if you look at how this process has been managed, today the National Cathedral has a statement out there explaining everything. Mm -hmm. Are you satisfied with the explanation they've offered and also how the process has been managed so far, given this is something that is supposed to be a testament for the Christianity of the country? Edwin. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, I think we could have to mention something about how it has taken so much activism or social media around for, to get the cathedral secretary to give us any form of a response. And that's should be quite worried. But you see, beyond even talking about the Bible, 
you have to understand these two institutions that are built in the country, the government and then the church. And these are two institutions which traditionally are one of the most opaque institutions, two of the most opaque institutions we have in this country. In this country, churches represent a very chronic lack of accountability to even their own members. And of course, the government also characteristically would prefer darkness than light. And so when these two institutions come together, you have, have a capacity raised to the power to a very... Edwin, say that again. Edwin, say that again. If you like. I, you, we, we lost you over there. What, Sorry? What, what point were you making? I was saying that if you look at, if you study the, the, the church and the government, these are two institutions that are part of the most unaccountable institutions you can ever find in this country. Churches don't account to their members on how they even use church finances. Hmm. And the government would prefer more darkness than light. And so when the two of them come together to say they want to build a cathedral, you have opacity raised to the power to. You have a blessed part to remain unaccountable as long as they can. And that is what we are dealing with. If you go to churches in Ghana today, church, there are members, most members don't know how much tithe will be collected in a month. Most members don't know what church finances is being used for. You go to churches today and and there is a greater desire for effigy to make Christianity, a Christianity of symbols. And then they shun basic things of highlighting our our our, our, our our desire to fight sin, our our need for righteousness. And they go about doing things that, that shows emblems of Christianity and not the substance of Christianity. This, what is happening right now, should have been expected from the one, but they think they can. These two institutions married to go to the cathedral, it will definitely be online. Right, Edwin, Edwin, important point. Let me let me bring in just before Edwin goes. Edwin, we have uh, this feedback. I think it's from the uh, cracky sound from the uh, headset you're using. So if you can hold it at a length that it doesn't rub off other things, so that we can hear you clearly, that would be very great. Evangelist Dr. Teria, um, okay. the cathedral statement that they've put out today explains that this cathedral project is supposed to be a much bigger symbol of national unity to bring the Christian communities together. And also the kind of challenges they've had in terms of raising funds. They're trying to bring the Christian community on board more involved now. Your congregation that you manage, are you willing to chip in to support this project at this point that the managers of the Catalina themselves have stated that the fundraising efforts have not yielded so much so far? Reverend, please, uh, you have to speak up for me. I, I can hear you very faintly, um, so we can't hear you at all. Hello. Is it, is it okay? It's getting better, but uh, get closer to the to the microphone. Okay. Uh, I'm saying that first, at the moment, I don't uh, manage a congregation. I'm more of a school outreach uh, person. That is who I have been over the years. Once a while, maybe in church, I'm giving uh, one or two assignments to and so um if talking about a congregation giving towards that i don't have that here but um looking at the um historically anytime a state is trying to support christian work um if proper um how do i call it the stringent measures are not put in place it brings some controversy. Now, looking at um, Ghana as a as a secular state with the majority of the individuals being there, if they want to have a national cathedral without the support of the state, it is possible. Now, looking at this from the onset, here we see the political based on the action that this is what they want. And so in terms of the Bible and they bringing in Christians along, what the Bible actually demands is 
that we should be saying that unbelievers will not get anything to say and in that matter against our God and against our Savior Jesus Christ. And so I would say that there should be thorough, I mean, there should be complete transparency in all that is to be done, whether the state is supporting or individuals are going to give money towards this. There should be absolute transparency and there will not be any problem. But that is the point um, Edwin made about the church being an opaque institution. Is that something you agree with, given all that we've seen now with this project? Um, I will say yes and I will say no. On these two premises, churches that have proper financial systems, they are able to account for every penny. And churches that don't have proper accounting system, they are those ones that will have challenges to the issue of how money are dispersed. I've happened to be part of uh, individuals in a church where they had to, um, you know, audit how much money was spent on this, how much money was spent on that. And so where there is proper accounting system, you see, um, I wouldn't want to mention churches, but when you have proper accounting systems, I don't think a dime would get missing. And bear it in mind that anyone, and that is where most Christians fear, anyone who is unable to account for any proper uh, money used in church, <laughs> God knows how he deals with such people. Right. Um, you raise a very important point about divine accountability um, and, and the concept of it being applied to the National Cathedral. Uh, Evans Thompson is, is also connecting. Evans, what do you make of that? That maybe, as, as the Reverend had just intimated, this is a National Cathedral. It's a cathedral built uh, in, in our appreciation of what God has done and in his name. The mere fact that this is being done, shouldn't it, uh, you know, keep us in a state of rest and comfort that eventually the right thing will be done? Because as Reverend had suggested, remember that this is all spiritual and religious, right? So eventually some the good will, will prevail uh, in, in the construction. Do, do you accept that as an explanation going forward in the way uh, accountability is, is, is carried out with the National Cathedral? Thank you very much, Evans. I find that very, very unfortunate. And I really do not agree with that at all. Because I think that issues that have sounded the National Cathedral project lately are very unfortunate, especially um, with reference to the fact that Parliament really has had little to do with all the monies that have been disbursed and all of that. Now, my worry really goes or is related to the board of trustees and and this has to do with accountability also and you know all the monies that have gone through um, um the processes and all of that so the board of trustees basically have a form of a fiduciary relationship okay so that's just to say that they they are the intermediaries or they hold everything that has to do with the cathedral in trust so what I am concerned about has to do with the fact that in line of all this confusion, even about the specific amounts that have been given and all of that, the silence from the board of trustees is very, very unpardonable. It's very unforgivable. It shouldn't be the case. Because what really, yes, we understand that they will have something to do with the fundraising and all of that. But the project has not really started as we all would wish it, it would have and there's been so much to talk about it in, in, in the negative light and the board of trustee has has not even issued any statement at all and you know in the light in, in light of the fact that um reverend Sautabel has had to opt out and all of that we really need an explanation because in a fiduciary relationship we the citizens are the beneficiaries right and and the point yeah, you make the there, the point you make there about the trustees not speaking up we know now from the statement that they've put out they'll be speaking next month and so we'll be trying to get some details there but it's a good point to now bring in pastor prince Corte. what 
role do you think the trustees have played in all this? Just listen to the point there from Ed, uh, from from Evans, who seems to think that the trustees have not done themselves so much favor in terms of how they've not come out to speak in the public domain. What? How much blame do you place on the trustees in this kind of relationship that we've had so far? Thank you so much. Um, I, I will not blame the trustees entirely. They, they, they have a job to do to mand the building of the cathedral. Uh, much of the blame should be those who appointed them. Those who appointed them, you put trust in them. You should follow up for accountability. Just as uh, one of the connectors said, they are to account to them because they appointed them to be trustees to the cathedral. But my issue is, what is the main purpose of the cathedral? It's a root cause. What is the main purpose of the cathedral? Is it to gratify someone's selfish ambition or is something spiritual? And if it's spiritual, what measures or what steps are we taking to? Or what uh, procedures, spiritual procedures are we taking to in order to bring the cathedral to life? Jesus Christ told his disciples something that before a man comes out to build, he should have calculated all his costs, calculated everything he will need to build that cathedral. Masons he will need, laborers he will need. So even before appointed them, it should have been the calculated effort. And I, I don't think that, uh, that was done. I don't think that was done. Uh, so the, the trustees, they are just to man the building. And they are accountable to those who appointed them. For we, the citizens, we are to hold those who appointed them liable for any law. Thank you. Okay, uh, you make the point, ask the qu fundamental question. What, what's the purpose of the cathedral? There are, there are three reasons the National Cathedral Secretariat uh, points to in this statement. One, it's a gesture of thanksgiving. Two, a symbol of the Christian presence and contribution to the nation. And three, a personal pledge to God. Uh, Evangelist, does that address your, your concern? Okay, so you know, the, 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 please unmute. A, please unmute. Uh, the action is going through. So, thanksgiving, who is, who is giving the thanks? Who is showing the appreciation? And what means? Because David pledged to God and he took effort, he didn't rely on his nation, he took effort to mobilize items to build, but he wasn't even given the chance to do so. So, he had to. Uh, reserve the items for his son to come and continue. And just as uh, one of the connectors also said, uh, his son tend to extravagant thing. So he put burden on his people. And we all saw what happened. The kingdom had to be divided. And he had just two sections of the division. So if, if I am to thank God or appreciate God, I shouldn't rely on my children to do that. I should make the effort to do that. And also, uh, symbol, the, the fundamental of Christian symbol was in when moral education was taken out of our education system. What really trains the child the way it should go was taken out. I don't think a child becomes a Christian by just going to church or seeing the church building. The, the, the actions and thoughts and intuitions that's in, inputted in the child. And that fundamental has been taken out. So what symbol is just a symbol? What happens to the lifestyle of the Christian? You know, you know that, that one of the key things that have struck me um, this whole week in this conversation is that our pastors, bishops, even the Christian council have had very critical questions about the approach, right? And you think, as they say in, in Christendom, things of Christ... You have to be a child to understand. And so you, you approach it with a simple mind of a child. And and then I, could feel quite, I don't know what, what you make of that. But even on this platform, the evangelisteria has serious questions about the approach. Uh, yourself, you're a pastor, have questions about it. Um, pastor Prince Quarty, questions about it. Like, what is it about, about this that even the men of God, those who look up to in Christendom themselves, 
appear to have serious critical questions about the way it's been done? Uh, I think that um, it is because uh, the, the foundation, the reasons that were given for the need to build a cathedral actually didn't add up. Uh, the approach itself has been problematic. The destruction of very important and expensive property that I doubt if you had even finished paying for at the time to, to build in its place, you know, everything just didn't add up. Um, but 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 but, but, but uh, let me be a bit controversial. But in the things yeah. of God, though, Massey, yeah. I mean, isn't isn't that the whole you know basis of Christianity where a lot of things simply will not add up? But you're doing it for Christ, and so you just do it out of faith. Faith yes. is is a but sign Evans, of things not seen, right? Isn't yes, what they say? Yes. But Evans, I can't practice my faith at your expense. You know, at Accra Community Church, when COVID happened and we decided to close down, we shut down before the government announced the shutdown. A lot of people told us we don't have faith. And I said, no, I have faith, but I cannot have faith at your expense. You know, I cannot drive with my eyes shut because I have faith that my car will not crash. Uh, that's not how faith works. Faith is not, uh, faith is not the putting aside of wisdom. Faith <laughs> complements wisdom. It doesn't take away from it. You know, you have a city that flies. Listen, whatever has been designed about the place so far, they should convert it into an ark, okay? Because maybe we'll have one week rain in Accra and all of us will rush and get into the ark and we'll float whilst Accra is flooded. That might be more useful. But that thing they are doing, okay, it doesn't represent Christianity. Um, as a country, unfortunately, our interpretation of Christianity has already robbed us of so much. I heard Edwin talking about churches not being accountable. Edwin, I'll dare you to come to Accra Community Church. We'll open our accounts for you. Every penny that is spent, every city, every peso is properly accounted for. It is not the church, it's the systems. You need systems, you need to design systems that hold leadership accountable. When you demand these things, you know, it is the right thing to do. Leadership, listen, the Bible is big on accountability. The Bible says in the book of Romans that so then each and every one of us shall give accounts of our lives to God. Well, God will hold all of us accountable. You cannot have people drowning when it rains after five minutes in a city, you know, and say that you are building God a temple. Are you serious? But isn't the what point is that they make that in, in spite of all the challenges of the country, you have to do something like this. And a statement actually, the, the, the statement from the cathedral management actually says this, that you have challenges as a country, but... In, in fact, yesterday, yeah. um, uh, when I, I, I was having an argument with a pastor, and he says, ah, but it's the, same, it's the same Bible that says, ask for the poor, they'll always be there. And he, cites a, he went to quote me a scripture that makes that point. Yes. So when Jesus said, the poor will always be among you, he wasn't saying that, rob your people poor. Listen, at the time the temple the, in Jerusalem was built, first and foremost, the land on which the temple was built was land David bought with his own money. In, in the transaction for that land, for that threshold, he told the owner of the land, he said, I will not sacrifice to God that which cost me nothing. David paid for that land, that land with his own personal money. He acquired a lot of the resources needed. Solomon came to acquire a lot more, and they still needed to tax their people, and they still needed slave labor. It was extremely expensive. It was a, it was a price that actually... Uh, took the kingdom away from them. You know, you cannot burden the people. This is this was the argument that was made to Rehoboam. You cannot unnecessarily burden the people. What is the price of bread today? If you work in any Ghanaian institution and you are you are paid in CDs, by this time, from last year, the, the amount you're paid, I'm sure your salary hasn't been increased, but everything else has gone up. So basically, the government, because of their ineptitude, and incompetence have robbed you. They have robbed you. More than 50% of your salary has probably already disappeared because what you could do with your 5,000 Ghana cities, 1,000 Ghana cities salary, you cannot do now. And by every indication, it is going to get worse. Mm. This is not the time to build God a cathedral. When Solomon built that temple, Israel was at its richest. In fact, there was no other time in the nation's history when they were as rich as they were during the days of Solomon. Okay. It, the interesting they point never acquired that level of wealth again. Ghana is a poor country. Okay. You know, so we have the resources, but we are poor. And because of our poverty, 
there are better things we can do with our money. Interesting. Do, do we have Baba on? Baba, are you connecting with us? Baba, are you on? Baba is connecting from the UK. Hello, Babs. Hi. Great, great, to, great to have you connected. Which part of the UK are you in? Are you connecting from? I'm in Sheffield. Oh, Sheffield. Okay. Are, are you a woman of faith, Baba? Yes, please. Okay, fantastic. And, and you live in a country littered with monuments and cathedrals built uh, by the church and some may argue by the state. So where do you stand on this? Do you build it? Do you uh, suspend it till later when the economy is rebound and doing well, or do you scrap it? Suspend until the economy is doing well. Because um, as it stands now, it's just like misplaced priorities because people are still hungry. I don't know why you put um, a church, you know, not even a church, because church could mean other things as in the people in there. But the building, putting the building first before um, the interest of the people, it's so disheartening. And yeah, that's my my take on but, this. But you, but you started by saying you're a woman of faith. I mean, well, yes, I had that question I, um, of Nanako Fiyako, he has explained it, but but that, that it doesn't take away what the Bible says. I mean, <laughs> you, 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 you don't need to see it. You don't need to think, you, you have to be a child to understand the things of the kingdom. <laughs> Why are you being so critical of this? If you have faith, just believe. Um, I don't think um, that's how, again, lots of us do not really understand Christianity and religion back at home. And I think um, the problem is because of, um, you know, how we've been schooled and stuff like that. But over here with the several cathedrals that they've got and all that, it's been barely filled. But the people are always, you know, happy. They've got food to eat. They've got um, stuff to do, work to run and all of that. So um, it's not about the building. Again, it's about making people comfortable so that um, they are able to practice Christianity more freely. Because today, if people are robbing in Ghana, we may say that it's because there's no jobs to do. But over here, you you barely find, um, you barely record cases like that, even though they still happen. And that's because people are comfortable. So once we've, we've put all those things in place, yes, we can look into putting um, together glorious churches to praise God and to thank him what not um but as a stance now i think it should be suspended okay so that's an interesting point i want to go through all my connectors now and ask that question and see where you stand before i tell you what the poll says and so uh, baba says suspend till the economy is is better um uh, pastor prince quarty do you build it do you scrap it or do you suspend to the to, to later oh, choose one where, where, where do you stand on this uh, pastor prince if you can unmute for me Okay, whilst I wait for him to come on, uh, Edwin, do you scrap? Do you still build? Or do you suspend till later? Edwin, please unmute. Okay, uh, let's go to Evans Thompson whilst they all tr get, to, get to connect properly. Yeah, yeah, Evans. Yes, uh, Evans, so yeah. what, where do you, what do you choose? Build, scrap, suspend yeah, later? Evans. I would say suspend to later, and later does not even mean within the next five years. I think that the National Development Planning Commission should have something to do with this. They should work in, you know, in association with the Board of Trustees. Let us not burden ourselves. Have they seen the figures of the economy lately? I mean, we cannot show that this particular cathedral project and, and, and bear all the financial costs that come with it. At this particular moment, I don't think we are in a good position to fund the National Cathedral. The National Development Planning Commission should be taxed as to how best we can actually, you know, act, uh, 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 um, or, or rally the Christian, the Christian body in the, the Christian body in the country to. Okay. Okay, Evan. So that's uh, that's your answer um, to raise that question. Funds for the project. Yeah, I think that would be um, Edwin. Edwin, what, where do you stand? Scrap, build, uh, postpone till later. Yeah. Edwin, I, I would say we should reconvert. That I would say we should reconvert it. We should convert it into a, a, a huge hospital, the, the West Africa's biggest hospital. It, it's too late to scrap it. We've wasted resources, and when you suspend it. I mean, uh, when 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 are you ever going to really begin? So I think we should just reconvert the whole. They should just call the architect guy to go there, redesign the whole thing inside inside out, and then make it into a big hospital that can attract so that the president doesn't have to travel out of the country, or the finance finance minister, or the ministers. 
don't need to travel outside the country to seek medical tourism of any kind. So I would say we should reconvert the project into something that is directly useful in improving the, the, the average life of the ordinary Ghanaian. Uh, evangelist uh, Dr. Teria, scrap, build, suspend till later. Um, and Edwin has added the third one, uh, repurpose the, the building. Sorry, it, I we struggle to hear you. If you can speak Hello. into the microphone, oh can, is it okay? Uh, it's so pretty Hello. low, but but yeah, go attempt again. Okay, is it okay? I think it's it's better, but not perfect. But yeah, go on. What would you do? Okay. Scrap, build, um, uh, postpone, or repurpose? Okay, from my perspective as a, a preacher and then also an academician, um, I remain a little in, undecided about that. Because I sit back and do a thorough, you know, analysis. So I remain neutral. Uh, so, but you, you can't be, can you? I mean, the options are, 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 are covers everything, right? I mean, you, are, do you want to scrap? Do you want to build? Do you want to postpone to later when the economy is better? Or do you want to repurpose? You must definitely have a position on these four options. I don't want to comment on any of these. Okay, I, I, that's fair. He doesn't want to comment on any of these. But let's find out what your own position is, whether it agrees with any of what you've heard there. This is what you told us on social media. And, and quickly, so what was the question um, we asked again on social media? I guess the same, but what, what was the question? Just for the balance of that. In your opinion, what should happen to the National Cathedral? On the Joy FM Twitter page, scrap it 57%. 13% says build it and then 30% says suspend till later. If you go to the Joy News Twitter page, same, 57% says scrap it, 16% yes say build it and then 27% says suspend it. But there are myriad of questions people are asking under the poll, Such as questions about go government's propriety. This one says, government, in these trying times, is this what you want to do with the taxpayer's money? It says no. Abdul Karim Salifus also says, continue building because taxpayers' money has already been sunk into the project. This one says, Tor needs that attention urgently. And then my crab says, the guy should return the money, the 25 million. The recipient should return the money. I think he meant Ajay and Associates. And this one says, the cathedral is being built on lies and deception. That is what he thinks. And then Victor Akazoni Roxen says, it should be turned into a factory to employ young Ghanaians. Okay, that's a repurpose question. James from Kumasi, this National Cathedral is needless. It is a misplaced priority. How could the President's personal pledge become a national asset? Even though if it can be a national asset, what will the President say to Ghanaians who are traditional believers? Will the President build a shrine for them to worship? Why should the President use their taxpayer money to build a cathedral for Christians to worship? I don't think the President really thought through it properly before embarking on this uh, project. And the final one uh, from Albert Sakumono. Uh, the National Cathedral Project was not approved by Parliament to be funded by the taxpayer, so it should be stopped and taxpayers' money spent should be refunded uh, to those who indeed um, had, uh, well, to all of us, he says. But overwhelmingly on the, on the polls, um, more than 50% on more than both... 57% on both pages say... They should scrap they, it. They should scrap, they should scrap it. it. Okay. So that's where we stand tonight um, on the National Cathedral on the back of the detailed explanations uh, from the Secretariat. This conversation will definitely continue until the structure is complete is repurposed, is scrapped, is built, or is suspended. Let's keep having it.